in an introduction to electricity, it is safe to assume that batteries only provide energy and do not use any energy themselves. And so we can say that the potential difference of a battery or over a battery is equal to the amount of energy that that battery provides per coulomb of charge. So a 12 volt battery, we would have said, provides 12 joules of energy per coulomb of charge. Now, in reality, we find that batteries require a certain amount of energy to pass the charge through them. And so there is going to be a certain amount of energy lost to something that we call internal resistance within that battery. And so in an electric circuit, we illustrate that internal resistance by drawing a small resistor and often drawing a dotted line that shows that that is all considered to be one item. So we say the resistance is included or inside that battery and internal resistance is denoted with a lowercase letter r. Now, because that internal resistance is within the battery, in it, any energy that is used inside that battery is considered to be lost because it is not able to be used in the external circuit, which is why we have a battery. And so we call the potential difference or the voltage that is lost to internal resistance, the lost volts. And it is obviously equal to the current that is passing through the battery and through the entire system multiplied by the internal resistance of that battery. So what we find now is we actually have almost two circuits where one of them is the internal circuit, the circuit that is inside the battery as the current passes through. It interacts with the resistance within the battery and therefore loses energy. And then we also have an external circuit. The external circuit is essentially what you would use that battery for, whether it's a light bulb or a heater or any other type of resistor. And we call that the load. Obviously, we use a battery because we want it to do a job. And we call the potential difference that is used in the external circuit the load. And that is going to be equal to the current that is passing around in that circuit multiplied by the external resistance, R external. What this now tells us is that the total amount of energy that a battery provides is no longer only going to the external circuit, but it is now the sum of the two circuits, the internal and the external circuit. And we call that total amount of energy per unit charge imparted by an energy source, the EMF, also known as the electromotive force. And we say that the EMF of a battery is equal to the load voltage, the amount of energy able to be used in the external circuit, plus the lost volts, the amount of energy that is lost inside the battery. And so what we can do is we can then simplify that to say that our, our load voltage is I times R external, the lost volts is I times R internal, which means we can simplify this to find the equation for circuits that contain an internal resistance as E is equal to I R external plus R internal. Now this can often cause confusion because now there are three voltages or potential differences that can be obtained from the battery. And so I'm going to just illustrate exactly which is which. We know that the EMF is the total amount of energy that a battery can provide. And so that would often be what is called the marked voltage. So when you buy a 12 volt battery, they are telling you that is the total amount of energy that that battery is capable of providing. The second one is that we'll find here in an open circuit. So when the switch is open, we know in an open circuit, because there's, it is open, there is no current flowing, which means our current is equal to zero. And if there is no current flowing, then what that means is that our number of lost volts must be equal to zero because lost volts is current times resistance. So what that tells us is that the voltage measured over the battery in an open circuit is our EMF. Because there are no lost volts, our EMF in that case is equal to the open circuit voltage, the voltage measured over a battery when the circuit is open. What we then find is that when we close the circuit or complete the circuit, 
we will find that a current starts to flow. As the current starts to flow, we know that there are going to be a certain number of lost volts, and then the voltage measured over the battery is no longer your EMF, it is then your V load. And what we can then also see is that the difference between our EMF and our V load is going to be our number of lost volts. It's the difference between EMF and V load, which can be obtained by rearranging this equation over here. Finally, it's important to remember now when using Ohm's law that you either, if you are using R total, then your total resistance you need to specify whether that includes only the external resistance or external plus internal, because if it includes both of these, in order to successfully use Ohm's law, you must then use the total amount of energy provided by that circuit. So you would either say that your total current in a circuit is equal to the total amount of energy provided by this in the circuit over the total amount of resistance in the circuit, or you could say that the current is equal to the total amount of energy used in the external circuit divided by the total amount of resistance in the external circuit, or you could say it is the total amount of energy used in the internal circuit divided by the resistance in the internal circuit. All of these now apply, but do not make the mistake of using the EMF of the battery with only the external resistance or vice versa.